Hey, what's up guys? It is me, Zane, back here with another video. Today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing a really interesting tutorial. This isn't really a known method and is not really a well-known thing. So I thought I'd bring awareness to it. It's a really cool thing that you guys can all do, all for free. And all you really need is a camera, a couple free programs, and your computer. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to import yourself into your own game of GTA 5. Things that you're gonna be needing for today's tutorial are a camera, Blender, GTA, obviously. Open IV and some other program I forget. <laughs> I'm gonna put it all right here. Anyways, let's get right into it. So I first started off by taking pictures at many different angles as reference images for the 3D modeling part. I'll put up on the screen all the pictures that I took so you guys can use this as reference images. So to start off this tutorial we're gonna head on over to our blender and you're gonna be greeted with a little pop-up. You're just going to want to click on general and then a little cube will appear up on the screen. Quickly delete that. Before doing this, you're going to want to have installed face builder. Hit on face builder and then press on create new head. Now a little head will appear up on your screen. You're going to want to click on add images, then navigate to your reference images. Once you've found them, select all of them, then press on open images. Now there's a little drop down menu in your little face builder extension thing over there. You're going to want to click on the first image and click on the little eye there and switch to pin mode. Now we have an overlay of a head and one of the pictures we just took. You're going to want to resize using the pins and match up the 3D overlay of the head to your picture. You want to be really precise when it comes to this and it sometimes is really tricky to, to work with these pins but you'll get the hang of it. Once you're done matching up the pins to the image. You're going to want to repeat the same steps for all the images that you took. Once you've finished matching up all the pins to all the pictures, you're going to want to click on one of the eyes on the drop down list and it'll take you back to the 3D viewport. You're going to want to scroll down and click on the drop down menu for texture and then press on create texture. Make sure all of them are selected. Then you're going to want to click on OK. Just from the looks of mine, I don't really think it looks like me and I think that's because when I was photographing myself, I was looking in different directions. So when it was trying to match up everything, including the pupils, I guess it didn't do it properly and my eyes look really small. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. But you'll notice on your 3D model that there's a bunch of parts missing from the texture at the back of the head. So now let's fix this. Let's go down to the top left drop down menu where we can switch modes. We're going to go from object mode to texture paint. Now within this, we're going to be using two tools. We're going to be using the smear tool and we're going to be using the clone tool. We're going to want to select our clone tool. This is kind of like the cloning stamp tool in Photoshop, but this is for Blender. So to assign a place where we're going to be cloning from, you're going to want to hold control and click on a source. Now, just like in Photoshop, draw normally. Now you're just going to want to repeat the process and do this to wherever you see black spaces. You can also use the warp tool to get rid of the collar of your shirt or, or kind of as a blend tool to merge those ugly cuts together. Once you're done this process, most of you can just stop here and export it as a 3D model. But in my case, I really just want to fix it 
because the pupils don't look good. So I'm going to export the texture by going to the UV image editor, going down to the drop down menu, selecting that KK face builder texture, and saving it. Also, a weird thing I've noticed that when I save it, the texture becomes more saturated and darker. Now I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So right now I'm using another picture that I took, or like another 3D scan I did a while ago, and uh, merging that texture onto the texture that we're currently using. Again, you guys don't need to do this. Now my pupils are normal size. Great. I'm actually going to go one step further and actually define and sculpt my hair to become more dimensional. You don't need to do this. This is just like a thing I want to do, but I bet it'll look good without any 3D dimension on the hair. Now that we're finally done the 3D model, we can now export it as an OBJ file. It's essential that you do click on OBJ because it won't work if you don't. And that's it! We're done with the 3D model guys. It's incredible that we did this without any sort of 3D scanners and just a camera. All with two programs and a camera. Now let's move on to the next part of our video which is turning this into a playable GTA 5 character. Let's now open up Uranium. You're going to be greeted with something that says create a new head. Click on that and now scroll down to where you can create a new head. You're now going to locate specifically three files. The MTL file, the OBJ file, and your textured image. Now it will be sent for analyzing and it'll take like a couple seconds. You're just going to want to click on next once you've been greeted with your own 3D head. You're now going to want to make adjustments to the skin tone, height, and the head's distance from the body. As you go along, you're going to be given the option to change your wardrobe, but there's no point. Now you're just going to want to click on Next and click Done. And now look, your 3D model is animated and moving. Now you're going to want to click on the first button over there, which says Play, and navigate to Grand Theft Auto V. Now you have the option of either being Michael, Franklin, or Trevor. I'm going to be picking Michael today. Now match your skin tone again to Michael's. I find it kind of pointless because we just did it earlier, but whatever. Position the head again properly, and then click on next. If you look down at the same drop down menu we used to navigate to GTA, you can now see a new button that says install. Click that and then wait for it to install. Now that our installation is complete, we can now open up our OpenIV. When you open up OpenIV, it's going to give you an option for the different releases of GTA, like Vice City, San Andreas. You're just going to want to click on GTA 5 and Windows. Once it's opened up, you're going to want to click onto your mods folder, go to Update, X64, DLC Pack, that Patches Day Inc. thing, DLC to RPF, X64, and then go onto Uranium, then open up Player1.RPF, then right click and extract that folder onto somewhere safe on your desktop. Now that we've done that, we're going to want to scroll down to x64v.rpf. We're going to want to go into models, cd images, steampedsplayer.rpf. Then you're going to want to replace that player1 folder with the player1 folder we just extracted onto our desktop. I forgot to mention you first need to go onto edit mode and then drag that player1 folder into the steampedsplayer.rpf. 
and now you're done. Now I would advise that all of you do go restart your computer after doing this. I've actually tried this many times and it wasn't working. It wasn't letting me open GTA without restarting it. And now when you open up GTA, everything should work normally. If you did follow the steps correctly, everything should be working. So we're just gonna be waiting for it to load. I just wanna show you guys some proof that this does work. Okay, so we've been loaded into the game, and as you can see, that is my face. And this thing fully works. I just think this is such a cool modification to GTA, playing as yourself. GTA already itself is such a dope game. All the graphics are like amazing, and I just find this to be an even more enjoyable way to play GTA. It even has my little head up there in the corner. It's really cool. There is an easier and more accurate way to get that 3D model. Um, for people who have the iPhone X and up with the, I think it's called the Lunar Scan or the Raid, I don't, I don't really know. There's this app called Bellis. I actually have used it before, but I didn't have someone with me, so I didn't do my full head and it only got like, my actual face. So I wouldn't have been able to put it onto the game, but if you guys are interested in me making an easier tutorial on how to use Bellis, uh, let me know in the description down below. Bellis is an app that allows you to 3D scan your face and it only costs $2 to actually export it into OBJ file that you can use for GTA. Basically, it would save you a lot more time and you would need to have zero skill in 3D modeling and uh, working with Blender. Let me know if you guys would want to see that. I can make that happen. It'll be 10 times easier than this, in my opinion. So I can make a part two on this if you guys comment down below. Please guys, this is like my first full length tutorial on something like this. Um, so let me know if you guys appreciated it and enjoyed it. Um, sorry for the lack of expression and uh, motivation in my voice. My parents are working at home, so uh, I'm trying not to be really loud and uh, project, so I'm sorry about that. But I really thought I should get this content up for you guys as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you enjoyed this, if this worked. I right, peace guys. Subscribe to Zen Buckle. <laughs>